Good evening. This right here is the great state of Arizona. And three days ago, a woman out in Arizona, she officially pled guilty to using her position within the Democratic Party to illegally harvest ballots in what's been described as a sophisticated ballot harvesting scheme. Specifically, according to the Arizona Attorney General's office, Ms. Gessermina Fuentes, who is actually the former mayor of San Luis, Arizona, well, she pled guilty to one count of ballot abuse for her role in a 2020 ballot harvesting scheme. And of course, if you happen to watch the movie 2000 Mules, then perhaps the type of scheme that was enacted, well, it might look rather familiar to you. Here's how a statement from the Arizona Attorney General's office breaks down what took place. Quote, Attorney General Mark Brunovich announced that Gessermina Fuentes of San Luis pleaded guilty on Thursday to one count of ballot abuse, a class six felony for her role in an August 2020 primary election ballot harvesting scheme where early ballots from other voters were collected and deposited into a ballot box on primary election day. Fuentes admitted that she knowingly collected ballots from another person and those early ballots belong to individuals for whom I am not a family member, household member or caregiver. Now, just to pause here for a super quick moment, the reason that her guilty plea mentioned the fact that these ballots did not belong to her family members, to members of her household, or to someone for whom she's a caregiver is due to the fact that under Arizona state law, the only people that you can legally collect ballots for are the people in those three different categories, family members, household members, and the people who, for whom you are an official caregiver. Now, in terms of how this scheme was actually playing itself out, well, as it was alluded to in this statement, early ballots were collected from voters and then were deposited into a ballot drop box on election day. And there was even evidence that not only was Ms. Fuentes collecting these ballots, but that she was even filling them out for herself. Here's in fact how a story from the AP described that this particular part of the case. Quote, besides the ballots, Ms. Fuentes was also caught not smashing that like button as well as not subscribing to the Facts Matter YouTube channel. Now I am of course just kidding about that. She was never caught. However, I do hope that you take a moment to both smash that like and subscribe button. That way you can get honest news like this delivered directly into your YouTube feed every single weekday. But now really, here's what the report said. Quote, Arizona Attorney General's Office investigators said Ms. Fuentes was running a sophisticated operation using her status as a well-known Democratic operative in the border city of San Luis to persuade voters to let her gather and in some cases fill out their ballots. Prosecutors were apparently unable to prove the most serious charges, dropping three felony counts alleging that Fuentes filled out one voter's ballot and forged signatures on some of the four ballots she illegally returned for people who were not family members. And in terms of the evidence that the attorney general's office actually had, well, at least among the proof was an actual videotape of Ms. Fuentes filling out a ballot. Here's how the story continues, quote, Investigators wrote that it appeared Fuentes used her position as a powerful figure in the heavily Mexican-American community to get people to give her or others their ballots to return to the polls. Fuentes and her co-defendant were seen with several mail-in envelopes outside a cultural center in San Luis on the day of the 2020 primary election. The ballots were taken inside and dropped in a ballot box. She was videotaped by a write-in candidate who called the Yuma County Sheriff. The report said the video showed her marking at least one ballot, but that charge was among those dropped. It's quite frankly rather cool when you can quite literally be videotaped marking a ballot, but later have the charges dropped. Furthermore, even though Ms. Fuentes was charged with only the actions that were caught on videotape, meaning that she was only charged for trafficking a handful of ballots, the Arizona investigators believed that her efforts went much, much further. Here's what the report goes on to say, quote, Attorney General's Office investigator William Cluth wrote in one report that there was some evidence suggesting Fuentes actively canvassed St. Louis neighborhoods and collected ballots, in some cases, Paying for them. But again, while investigations are still ongoing, at the moment, Ms. Fuentes has only been charged with what she was caught doing on videotape, specifically the videotape, which was shot by the other candidate. And one of the reasons that this is the case is because many of the drop boxes in Arizona just quite literally do not have any security footage available. In fact, it was only this year, in 2022, that there was a bill going through the Arizona legislature which would mandate that 24-7 security footage be made available at all ballot drop boxes. And even though that bill made it through the Arizona House, when it reached the Arizona Senate, what happened was that two Republican senators, they actually flipped, they sided with the Democrats, and they killed the bill. Meaning that to this day, and in the upcoming elections, many of the ballot drop boxes in Arizona will remain without security footage. Now, we here at the Epoch Times, we actually called up Ms. Fuentes for comment, and when we reached her, she told us that the charge, which again, she pled guilty to, was, quote, a result of political witchcraft and that her political opponents hated her. Furthermore, we also reached out to Ms. Fuentes' lawyer, who told us that, quote, Arizona's ballot abuse 
Abuse Law is a race-based, ongoing, anti-democratic, statewide, and national voter suppression effort. However, regardless of their opinion of the law, given the fact that Ms. Fuentes has now pled guilty, the next step is sentencing, which will take place on June 30th, so about three weeks from now. And although Ms. Fuentes is facing a minimum of six months in prison, her plea agreement actually leaves the sentencing up to a judge, who could give her probation, home confinement, and or a hefty fine. Ms. Fuentes will also lose her right to vote, and she must give up all elected offices. Now, what's interesting to note here is that Ms. Fuentes was first indicted all the way back in December of 2020 for her crime, alongside another woman named Alma Juarez. And back in March of this year, Ms. Alma Juarez likewise pled guilty to her role in this ballot harvesting scheme as well. And in fact, these two women appear to be working together to traffic ballots, given the fact that this is the statement from the Attorney General's office in regards to Ms. Juarez. Quote, Juarez admitted that she knowingly collected ballots from another person, and those early ballots belong to individuals for whom I am not a family member, household member, or caregiver. Juarez further admitted that the early ballots were given to her by Guermina Fuentes meaning that these two women were working together. Furthermore, just like Ms. Fuentes, Ms. Juarez is also facing a minimum of six months behind bars with the possibility of probation. She's actually scheduled to be sentenced on June 16th, which is in the middle of next week. Now, to give you a bit of broader context here, there are two things worth mentioning regarding the, uh, the guilty pleas of these two women. And I'll tell you about them after a quick word from today's sponsor. All right, the sponsor of today's episode is a phenomenal company called AMAC. That's A-M-A-C, and it stands for the Association of Mature American Citizens. They are quite literally one of the fastest growing conservative organizations in all of America, and you should consider joining for three main reasons. The first is the money-saving benefit, because as a member of AMAC, you get access to a ton of discounts at many different verticals. Things like vitamin stores, restaurants, retail shops, and so on and so forth. If you want to check out the full list, it's pretty exhaustive, you can do so over on AMAC's website. The second benefit is that you get exclusive access to the AMAC magazine. It'll be delivered directly to your doorstep, and it contains phenomenal coverage as well as deep analysis. And then the third benefit, the one that people say is their favorite, is that AMAC fights for your values over on Capitol Hill. In fact, you can check out the online version of this on their website. It's the AMAC Action Advocacy Annual Report, and it shows exactly what they're doing on Capitol Hill in terms of fighting what they call the socialist storm that's brewing in this country. So head on over to amac.us forward slash facts matter and sign up today. I'll also throw a link down in the description box below. Now, to give you a bit of broader context here, there are two things worth mentioning. The first is that this indictment and this guilty plea for Ms. Fuentes and Ms. Juarez is completely separate from the ballot fraud investigation that was launched by the Yuma County Sheriff's Office about three weeks ago. Now, on a previous episode, we already went through the particular details of that investigation, which was launched by the Yuma County Sheriff. And for your reference, that investigation already has 16 open cases related to things like impersonation fraud, false registrations, duplicate voting, as well as fraudulent use of absentee ballots. But again, that investigation is still ongoing, and it's completely separate from these two guilty pleas. The other point that I thought was worth mentioning is that Ms. Fuentes' guilty plea came just two days after a hearing was held at the Arizona State Legislature, wherein the researchers from True the Vote, they came and they presented the evidence that they were collecting regarding ballot trafficking within Arizona. Now, True the Vote is, of course, the organization which did the research, which was highlighted in the film 2000 Mules. And over in Arizona, they presented evidence of the cell phone tracking data that they were able to combine, showing how more than 200 individual devices visited ballot drop boxes in two of the state's largest counties no less than 5,700 times during the 2020 election cycle. Here's specifically what Catherine Engelbrecht, the founder of True the Vote, here's what she said during the hearing. Quote, when we started the project, we didn't know what we would find we began to think through what is a realistic expectation or threshold for when going to a drop box is too many times. We wanted to focus on a clear, narrow data set to demonstrate extreme outlier behavior. She then further noted that according to their research, each alleged ballot harvester visited a drop box an average of 21 times. And in Yuma County specifically, quote, the study found 1,435 unique drop box visits by 41 target devices based on cell phone signals, otherwise known as pings. Now we here at the Epic Times reached out to Catherine in order to get her comment regarding the guilty plea of Ms. Fuentes, and here's what she told us, quote, 
Based on our research, the Arizona model is one that is followed across the country, and it involves national organizations. So we, the American people, need to continue the pressure on to continue investigations moving forward to get to the bottom of what's happening, not just in Yuma County, Arizona, but in many counties across this country. If you'd like to read more about the case of Ms. Fuentes and Ms. Juarez, if you'd like to read more about the Yuma County Sheriff's investigation, or if you would like to actually watch the presentation that was given by True the Vote in the Arizona State Legislature, all those links will be down there in the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that if you haven't already, take a quick moment to smash, smash, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And now, in closing, I wanted to quickly mention that last Friday, so about three days ago, we published a phenomenal interview over on Epic TV between myself and Dr. Michael Yeadon, who is a former vice president at Pfizer, as well as Pfizer's former chief scientific officer for their allergy and respiratory research department. And we discussed a broad range of topics, including how, in, at least in his professional opinion, there is no safe way to combat an ongoing pandemic with a vaccine, since the necessary safety trials take longer than the length of the actual pandemic. And then secondly, how if we continue down the path we're going down, well, it will very likely lead to a total global control by a small group of elites. Now, again, that interview, in my opinion, was fantastic, but due to the censorship regime here on YouTube, quite frankly, I don't even feel comfortable showing you the trailer for that episode. And so if you'd like to check it out for yourself, if you'd like to watch that interview in its entirety, I'll throw the link. It'll be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you click on it. I hope you check it out because, quite frankly, Dr. Yeadon has quite an interesting insider's view into what's been happening in this world over the last two years. Again, that link will be right there at the very top of the description box. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free.